introduce yourself. Tell us what you do. Well, I think we will start with a short movie, and okay. then I will come back on stage. Okay, cool. Yeah. Good. Thank you. I'm very glad to be here. <laughs> Dynamic angenehm, wo ich herkomm, lausch mal, tu mich aus der Hauptstadt, Berlin, die Stadt, die mich vollkommen ausmacht. Sie nennt mich das Rap-Talent, Kreuzberg, Rap, Dozent, Represent, meine Hut und mein Leben ist schon hart genug. Ich sag nur lieber Angela und mein Tagebuch. Doch ich atme durch in dieser tristen Welt, der mir die Hoffnung gab, war Hip-Hop selbst, denn ich war in Brasilien, war in New York, habe Hip-Hop gespürt, denn ich sah es vor Ort. Mich prägte ein älterer Mann, durch die Kennenlernen, Legende KRS One. Mein Vorbild geworden, er brachte mir bei. Each one, teach one, und ich hab es gefallen. Schau hin, come on, fühl es, come on. Entweder Veränderung, ich spür es, come on. Können wir nicht schaffen, in der Ruhe liegt die Kraft. Wer hat die Macht, du hast die Macht. Schau hin, come on, fühl es, come on. Entweder Veränderung, ich spür es, come on. Können wir nicht schaffen, in der Ruhe liegt die Kraft. Wer hat die Macht, du hast die Macht. Ich dreh ab, come on, gib Gas, come on. Ich nehme kein Blatt von dem Mund, jetzt geht's ab, come on. Nur in Berlin wird an der Jugend gespart In ganz Deutschland, was los mit unserem Staat Und ich dachte, man soll in die Jugend investieren Man muss Leben lernen, was aber in Schulen nie passiert Wir können's ändern, es ist höchste Zeit Und Hip-Hop, gib uns die beste Möglichkeit Sich einfach zu entfalten, die Stimme nutzen und laut werden Damit die da oben es nach ner Weile mal auflernen Es ist mehr als nur wild und cool Es ist ne globale Sprache, ein Bildungstool Auch in unserem Land ist sie so beliebt Sie bringt mehr Menschen zusammen als die Politik Und ich kämpfe dafür, denn es ist die Sprache der Jugend Hip ist the knowledge and hard is the movement Schau hin, come on, fühl es, come on Entweder Veränderung, ich spür es, come on Können wir nicht schaffen, in der Ruhe liegt die Kraft Wer hat die Macht, du hast die Macht Schau hin, come on, fühl es, come on Entweder Veränderung, ich spür es, come on Können wir nicht schaffen, in der Ruhe liegt die Kraft Wer hat die Macht, du hast die Macht Ich glaub, Seminare und Rap-Workshops wie KRS One Mach da es mit Herz zu kommen Ja, Gott für dieses Talent in meinem Leben Möchte alles, was ich gelernt hab, weitergehen Will es in den Schulen verankern und denk daran, dass Hip-Hop unsere Welt Keller liegt die Probleme, wir kennen sie Große Lasten, wir stemmen sie Hip-Hop gibt uns die Energie Ein Plan, was alles optimiert Education und Entertainment kombiniert Entertainment nennt sich das Ganze Das Konzept würde vielen helfen, ne Platte Hab ein Ziel von heut an Eine von Reputation gesponserte Workshop-Tour in Deutschland Vielleicht werd ich in deine Schule gebracht Willst du mich in deiner Schule sehen? Du hast die Macht Schau hin, come on, fühl es, come on Ein Bild an Veränderung, ich spür es, come on Können wir nicht schaffen, in der Ruhe liegt die Kraft Wer hat die Macht? So this was uh, actually a pretty abrupt change in music from Anna F to Drop Dynamic from Berlin. I have been working with people like this young man for the past four years. I'm not a teacher and I'm not an educator. I'm not a social worker. I'm more or less a typical creative working in online video production. What my team and I have been doing these past years, unfortunately, is not typical yet. We create online content aiming at informing young people about politics and society. We want them to get a say in these matters, because after all, we are talking about their future. The video you just saw is actually the winning video of Drop Dynamic participating in a rap casting show called Reputation that we launched two years ago. So I'm starting off my speech with this young man, and I know it was long, but I wanted you to listen to what he had to say. And actually, everything I'm going to say in the next 10 minutes, I learned from him and from other young adults all over Germany. He represents the world out there because as beautiful as this conference is, this is not the reality. Out there, there's a lot of young people like him who have a lot of things to say, especially when it comes to digital technologies. And we need to listen to them, and they want to be heard. 
So this boy is what we call a digital native. He has been fed with connecting technologies, more or less, from birth on. He uses a keyboard more than a pen. He buys online music in a store, uh, not in a store, but online. And when he likes it and is excited about it, he shares it with friends. And this is actually exactly what we want our educational programs to be like. We want them to be exciting enough to be shared with friends. We want education to be joyful, fun, interactive, personal. For this young man, the classroom isn't big enough anymore. He wants to be edutained, thus educated and entertained at the same time. This is what he is used to, actually, in the Internet. An American survey states that 53% of 16 to 20-year-olds would rather give up their sense of smell than their phone or laptop. And 78% of students say electronics help improve grades and get them engaged in their education. And at the same time, teachers claim that the performance of their students is declining with every year. I still haven't found out if this is myth or reality, really. But what I think is that students have changed due to digital technology, and maybe they are no longer the people our educational system was designed to teach. So over the last three years, my team and I tried out several strategies to reach young people with societal and political issues. We were lucky enough to be funded by the great Robert Bosch Foundation, Google and other partners who were very generous with us. And as part of UFA Lab, which is the digital production unit of uh, the biggest film production company in Germany, UFA, we tried out digital content for digital natives. So we created new shows for YouTube. Live conferences between politicians, youngsters and stars. Talent shows that were mainly focused on message and opinion online quizzes on national elections, or rap battle events, where we kind of forced high-class politicians to literally serve young people from behind the bar. Some of our programs worked out really well, and some of them didn't. But every time, we learned. We were actually taught by digital natives, by kids, by young people, how to educate digital natives. Today, I am convinced that many of the insights we gained during the past years can help to reinvent the learning process in other settings, online and offline, and motivate students. So let me share our most important learnings with you, and you will be surprised because most of them will kind of sound familiar to you, I think. Connect on a personal level. We know why kids don't learn at school. We know why they can't concentrate. We know why they drop out. It's either family problems, poor language skills. Yesterday, we heard from Uschi Glass that actually 25% of kids in Germany go to school without breakfast. Still can't believe that number. So we know why there's a lot of reasons. But there's another important reason that we discuss far too rarely, in my opinion. Relationship. Human connections. I believe that everyone in this room has been affected by a teacher or a mentor in his life. And I think that no significant learning can occur without significant relationship. So it might seem bizarre that a woman working in online media states the importance of relationship. And actually, it's true. I haven't met most of the young people who enroll in our programs. But we speak to them every day via Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. We are always accessible, and if we need to, we throw in funny pictures of ourselves, like this one. I'm actually the person with the green wig. So this is what social media is about, really. It's about connections and relationship, and this is where young people are comfortable enough to leave their comfort zone and to start discussing topics they might not feel comfortable with, like politics, like society. 
So I think in times where schools are submerged by classes holding too many pupils, the contact with educators via social media could prove of vital importance. A friend of mine is a very talented teacher, and when he started off with his career, was angry, and he told me, you know, Anna, I teach, they learn, I'm not paid to like the kids. So I think he was wrong. <laughs> Because actually, kids don't learn from people they don't like. They can feel if they are taken seriously, if they are listened to, and only if they are, they will return the favor. So I'll throw in a few simple things, like seeking first to understand as opposed to being understood, or like apologizing. When we first produced Reputation, the talent show we saw in the beginning, we made a severe mistake in the casting process of our top 10 talents. And it was our first time. No one in Germany had ever produced an online web casting show before, and we just didn't know better. And our users, actually, were the first ones to discover our mistake, and it was them who pointed it out to us. And they were really cruel on us. They were merciless and was very painful until we apologized. And then, after the show, we received mails, messages and calls from young, really tough-looking rappers who said, thank you. Thank you for your respect and honesty. Thank you for showing us that we are worthy. And we said, well, yeah, <laughs> thank you, too. And we were really touched. So let me state once again, and I think this does not apply to educational settings only. The more you like your users, the better both of you will perform, and not because you have to, but because you want to. And you will be liked back, which in times of social media is a quality of huge value. If you have been following the development on YouTube in these past years, you will have noticed that there is an amazing quantity and quality of young people running very successful own YouTube channels. At the moment, the most successful YouTube channel in the world has 29 million subscribers. 29 million. Think about this, that's amazing. And actually, these people, they didn't study YouTube. They just started off, and they're very successful. So let me show you the three most successful YouTubers in Germany at the moment. And don't be surprised, because the numbers are much lower, but still very impressive. So these are White Titty, with almost three million subscribers. Le Floyd, which most of you might know by now, is the most successful conscious YouTuber probably in Germany, with more than 1.9 million. And this is Ape Crime with almost 1.5 million subscribers. So what does that mean? That means that every time these YouTube professionals upload a new video, millions of young subscribers get an instant message if they're not already online waiting for the video anyway. And what is actually pretty funny is that there is very fixed schedules. So YouTube starts to develop a little bit like TV. They know that on Friday at 6 o'clock the video will be there, and if it isn't, users are there and they start complaining. So, these young professionals all produce shows that we could broadly call educational, and their subscribers love it. And all of them live off YouTube and have become proper stars with a huge power and potential to shape and influence young opinions. Did you know this? Honestly, how many of you did know about this? Okay, so I'm actually relieved because when I look out there, I'm very concerned to see that very, the most important decision makers in Germany don't. There is this YouTube universe unfolding over our eyes with a high potential of young YouTubers, and politics, media, schools, teachers, they just don't see it and they don't recognize the potential of it. What makes these people so successful is that they still belong to the peer group, even if they are stars. They, say, they, sh they, sorry, they share the same age, the same experiences, the same values, the same language. And this is why can, they can talk to young people other than we can.
So my company, UfoLab, has actually started wor working very closely with many of these YouTube talents, helping them to create content, assisting with research and production matters, sharing our expertise. And the results are mind-blowing, really. Young users start discussing very relevant topics like the Israeli-Palestinian conflict in the commentaries below the, the, the videos, and they send each other links to related articles, to further reading, to Wikipedia entries. So they actually display the image of a very well-informed young generation willing to get engaged and willing to discuss about serious topics, if only they can do it in their setting and not in ours. So, therefore, as educators, we should encourage peer-to-peer -peer learning as much as we can, I believe. And this leads me to my last point, which is maybe the most important one. Our biggest challenge today, if we speak about education, is to keep up with younger generations and not the other way around. We need to learn from the people we teach as much as we expect them to learn from us. We should create spaces they like, move around in their digital neighborhoods, namely YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and others, and work with role models they feel comfortable with, even though we might not understand the fascination at first glance. Hannah Aze, founder of Wonderloop yesterday, talked about Oprah Winfrey. I believe that every kid has an Oprah Winfrey, so why not work with these very powerful role models? I like to think that teaching and learning can be joy. And I would like us to start debating on how we professionals in digital technologies can help teachers and educators in the task of educating our future generations. So I will end here because that's where we are. That's what stands before us. We need to take our best ideas, our strongest intuitions, and we need to test them. Educators cannot do this alone. Kids cannot do this alone. Politicians cannot do this alone, and we, creative media people, cannot do it alone either. We were all born to make a difference here, and on top, we are women, so we can do this. Thank you. This was a real relevant content. And I just asked Anna spontaneously if she is open for questions, and she answered yes. So if you have questions, I, th I think you really should have questions, because this is so necessary that we talk about what Anna just presented. Please ask now. Uschi, Uschi, come. Uschi Schwarzenbart. <laughs> just was what? Thanks. don't know about it, yeah. uh, and I don't have a question, I just feel like we should do something. Yes, so we actually thank you should. thank for the presentation. Very welcome. Hi, Isabel Welp, I actually teach at university, so what's the best thing, the best help that universities could do for you? Well, I think already sitting together and speaking about, because actually we don't communicate. We work in the media business, you work in the teaching business, and we don't speak to each other. So we would like to know what your problems are, and we would like to tell you about our problems. And actually, it's what we heard in this conference all along. It's about sharing. So we should sit and share, and then see what we can do. Absolutely. We yeah. should talk then. Yeah. I teach politics and uh, philosophy as well um, uh, on a Fachhochschule level. Uh, what I've noticed is about young uh, students, they like politics best in the fake news form. Like in Germany, the Heute Show, or mm -hmm. uh, in the States, um, which has been a great success and very political uh, committed. Uh, John Stewart um, or uh, Jamie Oliver, the Daily News. Mm -hmm. And I think um, that's some part, I mean, the young people are much more politically engaged and much better informed than a lot of uh, uh, former generations. So please consider that. Introduce, introduce the shows, you know, the, 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 the fake news, you know, the, the satire, the, com yeah. the comedy, which has a great political information, I mean, it is educative. That's one point, and the other point I want to make, you said about the women, but that was all a men's program, That's right. and I do 
really think there is a huge lack of political ed education among women, for young women, older women, whatever, women and politics just don't get, get along. I mean, and there we really have to find different forms to engage the women. Thanks a lot for this remark, actually, because I myself, when I was preparing the speech, I saw these are only men. And it is a fact that in Germany, at least, the YouTube scene is, is male. There's basically no women, and the women that are on YouTube, they do makeup tutorials. So um, I wanted to put it in my speech, but there was no time for it. But I totally agree. This is a very, very huge point that we need to focus on. Thank you. My name is Fabienne Serfati, and I currently I uh, support uh, social entrepreneurs in different functions. Um, I have a bit of a critical comment, uh, Anna. First of all, uh, uh, a very positive uh, impression on how 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 good your presentation was at uh, making your point, which uh, we are completely off track in the way we communicate and interfere with uh, youth, and if we want to pass on or exchange our political and social messages, we have to find new forms. Uh, I happen to have three teenagers home, 15, 17, 18, and a house full of teenagers, so I'm pretty much in touch with that. Uh, and I completely understand the point you're making and what your company's doing. What I'm critical about is the content. I am not impressed by the content that is transported by many of these um, you know, influencers, role models, change makers. I do not see from what my kids pick up and their friends um, as interesting modern social agenda as in empathy, as in social integration and so on. I do not see a political agenda. <clears throat> I actually think much of the content is racist, uh, self-serving, stardom and so on. And I'm sure it's a matter of you know, developing the vehicles to you know, create the platforms that they need to have more quality content. But that is one thing I would like to throw in the room. You know, I'm, I'm not sure it replaces traditional education in terms of the values, the ethics, and so on, yet. Yeah, you're totally right. You're totally right. And actually, that's why we work with them. I see a very big danger in this as well. I mean, someone who has 29 million subscribers can upload a video stating something, and everybody will follow on that. So this is why we professionals, it's another reason why we need to work with these people and try to teach them how to do proper journalistic research, for example, because they don't know. And that's what we do at my company. We sit with them and we try to reinforce the things they didn't learn and make their content better. And I totally agree on that point. And then the other thing that you said, I actually don't want to state that YouTube should replace formal education, never. I just think that we should really start thinking about a cross-media way of interlinking both formal school education, digital education, and edutainment, as Drop Dynamic called it in this video. Yeah. Uh, hey. Hi. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Felix from Twitter. Uh, <laughs> Hi. Um, and, and it's really interesting because we work with, with Ufa Labs as well. We work with MediaCraft. And then um, when I joined Twitter uh, last year, I saw lots of engagement around YouTube stars, um, and I think it's amazing that like, so little of you know them. I think it's amazing that you missed number one, Gronk. I he wasn't on there. He doesn't do education. <laughs> no, it's, that's what I mean. It's just yeah. like uh, he's not on there. And it's, we see so much engagement with young people uh, with, with you, on YouTube, and on Twitter especially. Like, we see them, them talking about it. We see them fanboying and fangirling about it. It's, it's like the new wave and the mainstream media completely missing the whole thing. And I don't agree that there aren't enough female uh, YouTubers out there. We see lots of female YouTubers, especially in the Let's Play uh, area, where people, uh, where girls play games and talk about it. We see a lot of engagement from female users on Twitter, like young girls uh, interacting with YouTubers, discussing like relevant issues, discussing sexism, discussing feminist issues. Um, which we at Twitter find amazing because we get this, it's like you're looking under the hood of a car and suddenly you have like all these young people talking about relevant things that are happening in the world and uh, so much more than you see in the comment area and it's uh, something that's overlooked. And just to give you an example, Why Titty um, that we saw on the comedy uh, trio won the Echo Awards for best video which was voted by fans. Now on the Echo Awards, biggest German music awards, um, when they come out they do a photo shoot
shoot of all the winners, right? So we get like all these big stars coming out and the paparazzi go like, oh yeah, take a picture. And then we're like, why titty? And all the paparazzi were like, who? And people don't know them. And if you don't know them, never heard of them, please do yourself a favor, go online, check them out, follow them on Twitter, talk to them. Because these people want to talk, they have something to say, and they are the voice of the new generation coming up. And I think it's so, so important that you presented this here because this is our future. And if you haven't seen it yet, open your eyes, please. Wow. Thank you. Thanks. That was a good closing word, I think. <laughs> I really encourage you to continue this conversation. Maybe later on the break, grab Anna, talk to her, talk to Felix, have a conversation, not only here, outside of the room. I, I, really, I think, Fabienne, your points are really worth to discuss further. So get together. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Great.